Hey folks, here we are, Wednesday's class. Uh, as you can see, I've got this stuff posted online. There's a link to Wednesday's lecture. I'm recording that right now. This link right now goes to YouTube, but hopefully I'll get the, uh, the particular YouTube video for this class posted very soon. Uh, there's two things I'm going to cover. One is estimating simple regression models in Microsoft Excel. And the second is a little bit about heteroscedasticity in the linear probability problem. In the lecture on Monday, we talked about heteroscedasticity and the types of problems it can create. And we looked at, we tested for heteroscedasticity with the PARC test with continuous data on the left hand side of the model, the dependent variable. And one of the problems with the linear probability model is, is heteroscedasticity. So we'll talk about that. Um, here is the data for lab number five. And if you click this, um, there will be 19 or 20 questions to ask from uh, the lab assignment. Um, there's two models that I want you to estimate. One is the continuous model with BSG expenditures and the second is the linear probability model for the demand um, for return visitation with various fee amounts. So I will open up the Excel data set and it's downloading right now and it's ready and here we go. So this is a slightly different set of data from what we've been working with in class. It's cleaned up in terms of the number of variables, but I want you to worry about. We've got nights stayed. Yeah, let's me look at the two tabs here. The data description is on the second tab. So the, the data, the full data includes 21 variables. The data for lab number five includes night state. How many nights did you stay in the Boone area? And that ranges from one to eight. And expenditures on that trip, which ranges from zero to 2,700. Okay, the data also includes a discrete variable. Yes, for return visitation is equal to one if they're willing to pay a higher registration fee for next year. Zero means that they would not pay that registration fee, and one means that they would pay that registration fee. And the registration fee ranges from 60 to 100. 60 is the registration fee for the previous year, and that goes up in $10 increments up to 100. So that's the data that you see, this ID variable. Is just a randomly assigned number to the individuals. Uh, some of these are same, are the same, and that's not a worry. All I did was randomly assign ID numbers and sorted those so that we're randomly selecting uh, 50 observations out of the 84 that we've been working with in class. So this is a subsample of the same data that we've been working with in class. The results that you get should look very similar, except the numbers are going to be different. And when I say the results should look very similar, that means that expenditures should be positively, positively rela related to the number of nights stayed, and the probability of return visitation should be negatively related to the fee. All right, so let's run some regr simple regression models. So in Microsoft Excel, if you click on data and then click data analysis, you'll get the data analysis box popping up and we've got a bunch of alternatives. And if you click regression, so I've got, I've got the input for the dependent and independent variable already populated because I've been playing around with Excel this morning. Let's clean all that up. 
And so the input, the Y range, that is your dependent variable. So the first set of questions in the lab assignment is going to ask you to estimate the model that explains blood, sweat, and gears expenditures as a function of night state. So the Y range is going to be blood, sweat, and gears expenditures, and you're going to choose all the way down to the bottom of the column. Now for this exercise today, I think we'll stop at 40 observations. And so the models that you run are going to be identical to what I'm running, except you're going to include all of the data. I just want my answers here to be different from the ones that you're asked about in the lab assignment. So once you select the dependent variable, click on the little... Uh, blue box. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but click on that and you get back to the regression uh, box. The input X range, this is your independent variable. And so you've been asked to estimate the effect of number of nights on blood, sweat, and gears expenditures. So I'm going to choose the same number B1 to B41, 40 cases of data. In your lab assignment, go all the way down to the bottom of that column. Okay, so up here in my Y range and X range, I have chosen the same number of observations for those two variables, C1 to C41 and B1 to B41. If you make a mistake and choose one fewer observation for the independent variable or for the dependent variable, and click OK, you're going to get an error announcement or an error box popping up. You just click OK. You can go back and see what you did wrong. You say, oh, well, I have 40 observations for my dependent variable and only 39 for my independent. So you can edit that up top. And click OK, and I still have a problem. Oh, dear. What is it? It is that I did not click Label. So C1 and B1 contain these two variable labels. So just click Labels and click OK. And that should be enough to get the answers from your regression output. Or get the regression output for your lab answers. OK, so I like to immediately make these columns a little bit better, bigger so I can see everything. And we've got, if you look at the lecture notes from chapter 12, you've got some annotated Excel output. And I'll just talk through that without writing on this. The multiple R is your correlation coefficient. And we've got a 21% positive correlation in these two variables. The R square <coughs> is the squared correla correlation coefficient. So if we multiply B4 times B4, we get the same number that's in the R squared box. So this means that about, if we get rid of all those numbers, about 5% of the variation in the dependent variable is being explained by variation in the independent variable. Okay. The adjusted R squared is something we'll talk about in chapter 13. The standard error of the regression is 388. <clears throat> and that number is used for a bunch of other statistics. The number of observations in this model is 40. My S statistic is 1.83. And its significance level, its p-value, is 0.18. Okay, so this means if we subtract the significance, the p-value from 1, oh, goodness, no. Okay, equals 1 minus F12. Okay, and make that a percentage. This means that we've explained, this model has explained 82% of the variation, or 
And that's the R squared interpretation, sorry. Okay, so this number means that we're 80%, 82% confident that our model is statistically significant. And that's not high enough for this to be a decent model. We're going to reject this model as being useful for um, analyzing any business decisions. Okay. Unless this is all you have, and then you know you're, you can be confident, you can be 82% confident. If this is your best available data, then you have to go with it. Okay, so right now for interpreting the last part of this output, we're going to ignore the fact that our model is not statistically significant at the 90% level or any other standard confidence level. Or we're going to say this is the best available data, and let's see what we can learn from it. Okay, so our coefficient on B0, our intercept, is 383. Let's go ahead and round those up. And the co coefficient on the number of nights stayed is 57. So if we interpret these coefficients, we'd say that if someone doesn't spend any nights in town, then they're going to spend $383. And for each additional night that they stay in town, they're going to spend 57 additional dollars. Okay. Get those digits to the right of the decimal back. Um, the coefficient divided by the standard error is the t-stat on the is the t-statistic on the coefficient. So the t-statistic t statistic on the coefficient is 3.26. Its p-value is very low. So we're pretty confident that if someone does not spend any nights, then they're going to spend about $383. We're not going to be as confident on the slope coefficient because the ratio of its coefficient to the standard error is fairly low. It's 1.35. So we're only 82% confident that the slope coefficient is statistically significant. And there's it's not a coincidence, coincidence that the p-value on the slope coefficient is equal to the p-value on the f-test. Those are always going to be equal with a simple regression model. Okay, so that covers a lot of the questions that are in the lab assignment. I'm also asking you to do confidence and prediction intervals for different values. Um, take a look at your notes. We talked a little bit about it in class on Monday. Okay, to estimate the linear probability model, you do it the same way in Excel. Click on the Data tab and go to the Data Analysis plugin, Data Analysis Tools. Click on Regression, and we just want to change the variables that we have in the Y and X boxes. So the dependent variable for the linear probability model analysis is yes. This is yes for return visitation. And the dependent variable is x, and that's the fee. Okay, so here we have E1 to E51, and I don't want to do the whole set of data because then you would just get the answers from this. So I'm going to call that 41 and 41. We'll use the same 40 cases of data. So E is our yes variable and the D column is our fee variable. So we have the right variables there. We've got labels checked. Click OK. Then we get regression output the linear probability model. Okay, so in this case, we have a much higher R squared. It's 0 0.41, so we're explaining 41% of the variation in the dependent variable by the fee amount. The significance of the, well, the F statistic is 27, and that's pretty large for a simple regression. The significance value is 7.94, and we move that decimal place over six, six spots. So if you want to see what that number is, you can click on the number tab and instead of general, call it a number. And let's include a bunch of decimals. And so our p-value is very low. It's a very low number. So 1 minus the p-value 
is the amount of confidence that we have that this model is doing a pretty good job and we're 99% sure that things are going okay. So the constant is 2.26. One problem with the linear probability model is that we're forecasting, is that when we forecast outside the range of experience or even when we don't sometimes, the predicted probabilities are going to be beyond the 0, 1 range of data. And so that's the case here. The probability when the fee is equal to 0 is 2.26 or 226%. And so that number is just nonsense, and we, we're going to want to ignore that. So for every dollar that the fee increases, our slope coefficient tells us that the probability that the visitor is going to return falls by about 2.2%. If you change that number to a percentage, percent style, and add a couple decimals, so every dollar increase, the probability falls by 2.2% or 2.2, it's really not a percentage, but that's the way we think about things a lot. Let's make it go back to a number. Okay, so the ratio of the coefficients to their standard errors for both these variables is very large. The t-stats are significantly or quite a bit above two. The p-values are very low. And we have fairly tight 95% confidence intervals. So this model is doing a pretty good job. Okay, the problem with the linear probability model, in addition to the fact that the range of predicted probabilities can extend beyond the 0, 1 interval, is heteroscedasticity. Now I want to open up a web page that I worked on a long time ago, and this is about circa 1999, so about 16 years ago I put this together at East Carolina University, and um, it's traveled with me to App State University, but I haven't done much to it um, beyond that. This is an introduction to logistic regression, which is an alternative to the linear probability model. So this presentation starts out with nuts and bolts. You know, why use logistic regression? Okay, and first, the first reason, just like the first reason for using the linear probability model, is that a lot of um, dependent variables or important research topics are coded 0, 1. And so if you want to develop a model for a binary outcome, you'd want to use a linear probability model or logistic regression. So the linear probability model, one question is why shouldn't I just use ordinary least squares? And that's a good question. So here's the linear probability model that we've been talking about where A is the intercept instead of B0 and capital B is the slope instead of B sub 1 and all that stuff is defined here. Okay, so use of the linear probability model generally gives you the correct answers in terms of the sign and significance level of the coefficients. Okay, the predicted probabilities from the model are usually where we run into trouble. There are three problems with using this model. First is, the first problem that's usually described is that the error terms are heteroscedastic. And this is when the variance of the dependent variable is different with different values of the independent variables. And usually that's, a, that's by construction with the linear probability model. You're typically going to find that. Okay, the second problem is that E, the error term, is not normally distributed because the probability only takes on two outcomes. And this is the non-normal error problem that we talked about in Chapter 12. And then the third problem is the predictive probabilities problem that we talked about already when we talked about the linear probability model in Chapter 12. Okay, and then the logit model, logistic regression, solve these, solves these problems. Now, don't worry, we're not going to worry about logistic regression models in Econom ECO 2200 Business Stats 2. We just want to be aware that there is a solution to this heteroscedasticity problem that we're going to test for right now, and my guess is we're going to find heteroscedasticity. So that's not the right spreadsheet. 
And there's the correct spreadsheet. So let's go back to the data. And I want to do a park test with these data. So data analysis, regression, and there's the same variables. So I want to include the residuals in my output. Click OK. And we get the same estimated regression model. And in addition, there's residual output. We have 40 observations of data and predicted values. And I'm just going to eyeball this column. And it looks like we don't have any negative probabilities or probabilities beyond the or greater than one within the range of the independent variable. So that problem with the linear probability model is not observed. And here's the residuals. So to do the park test, I want to include the residuals in my data set. So I'm going to copy those 40 residuals, and they are in order. I'm going to paste them over to my data set. So the park test is a regression of the natural log of the squared residuals. So I'm going to name I'm going to create a variable called the log of e squared, call it ln e2. And we're going to regress that variable on the natural log of the independent variable x. And if you recall, this is something we did in class on Monday for the continuous type of model we've been estimating. Blood, sweat, and gears expenditures regressed on night state, and we did that test in class. We did not find heteros that heteroscedasticity was a problem. Okay, so to construct this variable, The natural log returns the natural logarithm of a number, ln. Okay, we want to raise the residual, f2, to the second power. Okay. And we get a negative number there. That's not a problem because the squared residuals would be lower than the residuals themselves. They're all um, can be less than one, and so the natural log of any number less than one is going to be less than zero. So the natural log of x okay, equals ln d2, and then we will, you can copy that, by dragging it all the way down to the 40th case of data. So the park test, we want to see if the residuals measured as log of e squared depend on the, dependent, the independent variable log of x. So let's just run a regression analysis. Click on the data tab. Click on data analysis. Regression. So in this case, our y range is the log of e squared. Our x range is the log of x. And we've got the labels box checked. Click OK. And this regression output gives us our results from the park test. And the key variable that we want to look at is the or the key statistic is the uh, t stat on the slope. And so our t stat is negative 0.31. And so it is uh, less than the critical value of 1.96. The p value is 0.76. And so these two numbers tell us we don't need to worry about. Uh, heteroscedasticity in these in the linear probability model.